Welcome to my latest video. Well, this video is going to be sort of a step to the past a little bit, not that far past, but I realized as I was organizing my video files that I hadn't done the last episode of my FE exam sequence. So this is it. It's going to be a final exam. I've picked 20 questions that I've designed myself, none of which are carried over from anything I remember in the test or any of the material that I've used. It'll be a test, take a break, and then we'll go into the answers. And I'll describe a little bit about the technique I used on coming up with some of those answers. Anyway, I do suggest if you really want to get prepared for the FE exam, and I've said this in the past, go ahead and get the FE exam practice book for your particular discipline from NCEES. This is the one for electrical and computers that I used, and quite honestly, I found it to be extremely good. I found questions in here that were really, really helpful in taking my test. Not to say that you'll wind up with the same test I did, unlikely, because they change it every quarter, but every little bit helps. So hopefully you get something out of this, you do well in this test, try to keep it under an hour, right? 20 questions. If you did, I hope you'd consider subscribing to my channel. Okay, let's get started. We're going to be doing a sample test questions and solutions video. Let me start with the sample questions first. So here's the current agenda. And as you can see, those of you who have gone through at least some of my previous videos on this topic, we have had up to this point nine parts. This is the 10th part, and this is going to be the 15th video in the sequence. Hopefully you've gotten something out of the previous ones, but if not, maybe after this test, you might go back and take a look at some of that because the techniques that are described in there are how you would answer some of these questions. Problem number one, you purchase a machine press that will be used for 10 years. The purchase price is $15,000. The annual maintenance contract is $1,000 and the salvage value at the end of that period is $5,500. The effective annual interest rate happens to be 6%. What is the total cost over the life of the press in present value? Problem number two. What is the inverse normal when sigma is equal to 0.22, area equals 0.75, and the mean, mu, is 0.95? These are the possible choices of answers you have. One of those is right. Problem number three, divide the number 316154, which is an octal number, by the number four, which can be either decimal octal or hexadecimal. Then convert that to hexadecimal. Convert the answer, that is. The possible answers are... Problem number four, what is the point of inflection of the equation y equals 2x to the third plus 4x squared plus 7. Possible answers are problem number 5. If a matrix M contains following nine values, it's a 3 by 3 matrix, what is M to the minus 1, which is the inverse of that matrix? Problem number 6. Which governing body is responsible for all professional licensing in the United States? Problem number seven, solve for all values of x using the equation 3x cubed plus 4x squared minus 2x minus 9, all equal to zero. Problem eight, solve for matrix times vector. The matrix M1 is a three by three matrix as shown here with those values, and the vector is a three dimensional vector shown to the right of that. Problem number nine, a company purchases a new accounting system for $84,000. The current interest rate is 7.5%, and the expected life of this equipment is 10 years. Assuming MACRS depreciation over an eight-year period, if the company is sold six years after the purchase, what would be the book value of the equipment at the time the company is sold? Problem number 10, you purchase a minibus for $175,000 with an expected usable life of 21 years and a final salvage value of $22,000. What is the annual depreciation using straight line? Problem number 11, solve for X, Y, and Z using these three simultaneous equations. These are the possible answers. 
problem number 12. Would a contract be legal if it was written to simply state that subcontractor A does not have to be paid under any circumstances? with no other conditions or enumeration stipulated. The contract just says what I have underlined. Would that be legal? Problem number 13. You decide to donate to a charity long term, payable well after your lifetime. So you join a fund that offers a rate of 19.5% for 85 years. That's a maturity. And you deposit $10. How much will that charity be able to withdraw at maturity 85 years in the future, assuming compounded interest? Problem number 14. Given 3 7th x squared plus 2a equals 7x minus 3, when x equals 4, solve for a. What will a be? Problem number 15. Solve natural log 3 sevenths minus log to base 7, 16 sixth times log 300 over 9. These are the possible answers to that equation. Problem number 16. Solve the numeric integral from pi over 8 to 3 pi over 8. The function tan x dx. What's the numeric value of that? The possible answers are, notice they're all in radians, not degrees. Problem number 17. Which of the following legal concepts prevents a one-way, no reverse enumeration contract from being legal? Problem number 18. You purchase a server for your manufacturing plant that will be used for 10 years. The purchase price is $6,500. The annual maintenance contract is $500. And the salvage value is $1,500. The effective annual interest rate is 9%. What is the total cost over the life of the server in present value? Problem number 19. Using a fair coin toss of eight times, what is the probability of getting exactly three tails in eight tosses? What is the closest answer? Problem 20. Solve, with all numbers being complex, seven minus i minus three plus four i times five minus two i plus five plus six i. The possible answers are Okay, let's solve this guy. I'm going to go through the answers and some of which I'll explain how the answers came about. Have your answers ready? If needed, tap the screen to pause before we start solving. Solution to problem number one. Start by creating the cash flow diagram. So this is the cash flow diagram for that particular problem. Initial outlay $15,000, salvage value $5,500, and increments of $1,000 over a 10-year period. Then calculate each part separately using the tables throughout. The tables work out well in this case. Step one, the $15,000 is already in present value. So just add that in, 15,000. Step two, the annual maintenance is an annuity that must be brought to present value using the regular equation X to the P slash A 6% 10. You should know that from the lesson. And that comes out to 1,000 times 7.3601 from the table, which results in $7,360. Step three, the $5,500 needs to be converted to present value. So that's an X of present given future, 6% 10 years. That equals 5,500 times 0 0.5584 from the tables again, or $3,071. The total present value of this entire problem comes out to be $25,431. Problem number two, what is the inverse normal? One sigma is 22, area is 0 0.75, mean is 0 0.95. Using the calculator and the function stat dist distribution and the distribution function in particular, pick inverse normal as the function and the answer comes out to 1.098. Pick the closest answer, which in this case is B. Solution to number three. Divide 316154 octal by four, then convert the result to hexadecimal. This is solved using standard calculator base functions, and the answer comes out to C, 671B in hex. Solution number four. What is the point of inflection of the equation y equals 2x to the third plus 4x squared plus seven? Well, let's work it out. The first thing we have to do 
is we'll copy the function over again, but let's take the first derivative. And the first derivative converts that to 6x squared plus 8x. And then we have to take the second derivative, which becomes 12x plus 8. We set that to 0, and we solve for x. So x comes out to be negative 2 thirds. And that's one of the answers provided. Solution number 5. If a matrix M contains, as shown here, what is the inverse of matrix M? This is solved using the standard calculated matrix functions, first filling in a 3 by 3 matrix, then taking the math inverse of that matrix provided by the calculator. And the answer is a 3 by 3 matrix, as shown here. Solution number six, which governing body is responsible for all professional licensing in the United States? There's only one, and those are the state-established professional engineering boards, or that's true for all professions, actually, not just engineering. Solution to number seven, solve for all values of x. Now, if you look at this, it probably has three values, but we use the calculator, standard polysolve function, and it just so happens that two of the values came out to be the same. So even though it did show an x1 and x2 and x3, x3 was equivalent to x2 in this case. So we really only have two solutions to this problem. Solution number eight, solve for a matrix times a vector with the two given here. Again, using the matrix and vector functions on the calculator. It actually comes out to the actual function displayed in the calculator as a bracketed A times a bracketed small u. The answer is, as you can see here, a vector. Solution number nine. Well, you start by calculating the total depreciation taken on that equipment up to the point of the company sale. Add the first six values from the 10-year MACRS recovery table given by the IRS, which are shown here. They total up to 70.51. You then multiply the original purchase price by the factor calculated in step one by 100. And finally, you calculate the book value by subtracting the total claim depreciation from the original purchase price that's claimed up to that point. So the book value comes out to be 24,772, which is the value that should be considered in the actual sale price of the company. Solution number 10 is the purchase of the minibus, 175,021 years. Using straight line formula, depreciation, D sub J, 175,000 minus 22,000 divided by 21, get us subtract the salvage value, that becomes 153,000 divided by 21 or 7,285.71 that you can depreciate on this minibus each year. Solution number 11, solve for X, Y, and Z given this three level simultaneous equation. You use the standard calculator syssolve function to solve this one. Of the choices given, C becomes the right answer. Solution number 12. Would a contract be legal who was written simply that stated, subcontractor A does not have to be paid under any circumstances, just like that. And there were no other conditions or enumeration stipulated other than what you see underlined. No, that is not legal in US law. Now I'm not a lawyer, but it's right out of the textbook. So you can look this one up. Solution number 13. You use future given present calculation. However, this is not something you're going to find in the table. So you're going to have to use the actual formula. The formula for this one is pretty simple. Bracketed I plus one to the nth power, the nth being the number of years or 85. Therefore, if you solve that on a calculator, you get $3,769,397.60. Pretty good sum for a $10 investment. That's the power of compounded interest for long terms. Solution number 14. Given this equation that 37x squared plus 2a equals 7x minus 3, and then assuming that x is 4, you solve the issues in the calculator using the num solve function. The value of a comes out to 9.07 rounded, but that is the value. And the fact that l minus r equals 0, as I explained in the lesson on this particular topic, that means that is an answer exactly. Solution number 15, solve natural log 3 sevenths minus log 16 over 6, that's the base 7, times log 300 over 9, which is base 10 by default. You solve that using the single key on the calculator for natural log log and log to any base you want. The answer comes out to B of the ones given, negative 1.61. Round it a little, but that's the answer. Solution number 16, find the area under a sine curve from points pi over two to three pi over four. We use a calculator, numerical 
integration for this, but do make sure that your angles are set to radians, not degrees. The answer will be, in this case, 0.881 rad, rounded a little bit, D in this case. And this is the original equation, and you'll see this actually in the calculated display when you type it in. When you hit enter, you will get that answer as described here. Solution number 17. Which of the following legal concepts prevents one-way, no reverse enumeration contract from being legal? Sort of like the previous problem we saw related to this. Of the choices given, it is quip pro quo. And you can look that one up in the textbook as well, although I'm not a lawyer, so please look it up or consult a lawyer for either this problem or the previous one where legalities are mentioned. Solution number 18. You start again by creating a cash flow diagram. In this case, you start out with the initial outlay of 6,500. You actually have at the end of it a salvage value of 1,500. And then along the way, you're paying $500 each year for maintaining that equipment. Well, this one, you can't find in the tables the actual percent percentage of interest that this problem requires. So you have to pick the value before it and the value after it, two different tables. And then you have to basically do a linear interpolation of them. And we had to do that for both step two and step three. So out of the table, you see the values that we came up with and what the final interpolation of each of those was. So now let's go through it. You then calculate each part separately using the tables. Again, in this case, including the interpolated values from the tables. Step one, the 6,500 is already in present value. So just take it, jot it down. Step two, the annual maintenance is an annuity that must be brought to present value. That comes out to 500 times the value right out of the table that we calculated above, which is a 6.4274, which is interpolated, or $3,213.70. Step three, you need to take the $1,500 that's a future value, bring it to present. Again, the interpolated value out of the table, $1,500 times that comes out to 636.60. When you add it all together, the total present value of this deal, $10,350.30. Solution number 19, using a fair coin toss of eight times, what is the probability of getting exactly three tails amongst those eight tosses? Closest answer. Well, this one, you again, use the calculator. You have to use statistical functions. The particular function is distribution. It's a binomial distribution called a binomial PDF or single binomial PDF. You have to type in these values into the calculator. How many trials N of eight? The success factor P of 0 0.5 because this is a 50-50 chance when you toss a coin. So the probability is 0 0.5 and the number of tosses that you want to come up with the same value is three. When you plug it in, the calculator comes up with 0 0.21875 which is choice C, rounded amongst the choices given. And finally, solve this equation. It is uh, using all complex numbers, and you have to type in each of these things and the appropriate sign. Ideally, though, you should separate them with right and left parens. It'll look like what's displayed there on the bottom, bracketed, each of the separate functions and then the larger functions between the brackets to make sure you get the precedence right. But when you do hit enter, if you did it that way, you will get choice A, negative 11 minus 9i. So how did you do? Just keep in mind, you only have 2.909 minutes on average to answer any single FE question. Did you get all 20 questions answered within a total of 58 minutes and 10 seconds? Hopefully you did. Did you get at least 12 of those answers correct or more? Been better if you got 13 or 14, but 12 would squeak you through. Well, if you achieve both of those metrics, you're probably ready to go. That's a great job. Well, this is the end of the FE sequence. However, I will make a whole new sequence for PE. Now, since there are a lot of PEs, 20 some odd of them, I'm going to have to stick to the general topics that all the PEs would have. So I'm not going to cover any discipline specific material on those lessons either. So keep on the lookout for them. Hopefully you subscribe to my channel and uh, you'll be able to get notices of that. Okay, that concludes my uh, FE exam final part, part 10, but video 15. And in this particular video, you've taken a test. Hopefully you did well in it. I really hope that you've gone through the other videos and you found it useful. So if you did and you're planning on taking your test, I guess after all this is over, please consider subscribing to my channel. Just click on the little head that'll pop up here in a moment, follow along and subscribe. It would really, really be helpful. Anyway, until the next time, take care. And thanks for watching.